All right. It's Fantasy Life. It's your boy Stevie B here with my two guys. The Polish Hammer. <laughs> the Bagala special, baby. Bagala. All right. So today's episode, we're going to go over um, a dynasty team, basically grade this team. Um, and uh, we're going to grade two teams, actually. So first one here, um, and we play in a two running back, three wide receiver, one flex, one tight end, okay, one QB. Okay. Matt Stafford, Swift, McCaffrey, Keenan Allen, Ayuk, Lazard, Claypool, Gage, Van Jefferson, Moss, Stevenson. That's pretty much his team there. I guess those starting three receivers would be Keenan Allen, Ayuk, and Lazard. And in the flex, I guess you'd put uh, Russell Gage, Stevenson, Moss, I guess, um, and even Claypool. But uh, I guess let's start with you, Bagala. What do you uh, what do you think about this team here? Uh, solid team, playoff team last year. Um, uh, he did not have Christian McCaffrey for most of the year. He was still able to pull out wins. Um, Matt Stafford uh, really had a big year last year. He got the big contract. Looking to uh, go back to back with Super Bowl. So Matt Stafford's a solid presence at the quarterback. He could upgrade his receivers if he really wanted to. Um, I think Russell Gage is kind of going to be okay this year with Tom Brady. I'm not sure. And I, I also uh, uh, was talking uh, Polish about this is that um, I like Lazard this year, even though I traded him. I like him. He could pop. He could end up being, a you know, uh, a solid wide receiver three, two. The, the Packers really don't have anybody, and they're going to roll with uh, rookies, it looks like. So um, <clears throat> he could make a move at receiver, but um, I definitely – it's that team is going to go as Christian McCaffrey goes. We all know that. And if McCaffrey comes back and he's rolling all on cylinders, watch out. So, so would you leave this team as constructed or would you move – I would try – I, I would try. I would try and go for a, a good wide receiver. I, I would try and make a move for a good wide receiver. Um, I wouldn't be. It, well, in the draft, it depends. Uh, what pick does he have? Do you see? Got the one ten. So it, it might be a little thin down there. A couple good guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, it could be a little thin down there, but I would go for a trade. I'd try and probably package that one ten and and mm. and maybe Keenan Allen and, and, and swing for the fences if I could, or, you know, go get a solid wide receiver too to fill in. But um, it, I think it really, it all depends on for him. Is CMC going to be back? And is, it, if it, is he going to be rolling? Because if he is, then with Matt Stafford and Keenan Allen, and I think Dal- uh, Dalton Schultz at tight end is going to be really good. If, if McCaffrey's back, that, that team could be dangerous next year, I think, in my opinion. So who are you giving up, though, to get a wide receiver, too? Uh, I don't I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, maybe how did, you don't want to split with one of those backs. You know what I'm saying? Um, maybe you try and, you know, send a pick somebody's way if they, you know, I know one team is stockpiling picks in our league. Uh, if I could try and swindle Jerry Judy as a, a for a pick and, and and maybe something lower, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I do that. You know, Jerry Judy and uh, a pick and Ayuk for Jerry Judy. Maybe I do that. You you don't know everybody's situation, but um, you know if, if I can, you just any way you can, just try and get some more receivers because. Um, after this year, Russell Gage is going to go back to giving you uh, zero points. So, you know what I'm saying? With Tom Brady, he's good for – I think Russell Gage could catch, you know, 60, 70 balls for 800 yards this year. Godwin's going to be out. He'll, he'll be a nice little flex. But other than that, um, you're hoping, you're wishing Bazard comes through. You know, Debo takes a lot of that work in San Francisco. So, Ayuk is – I don't. I, I don't really like Ayuk. 
I, I don't. And um, yeah, so. In, uh, but uh, if, if CMC you... comes back, it's all for naught because he, he'll, he, he, see, as we know, CMC can run you to the championship. So, you know. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, Ayuk from, from almost week seven on. I mean, was decent, was pretty solid. I mean, 9, 17, 18, 11, 6, 15, 12, 12, 18. He had a strong 12. finish. No, he, so he, he did kind of finish strong. Um, <clears throat> I think that's why, for me, I, I'd, I'd be selling Ayuk with that pick and trying to get that wide receiver, you know. That yeah. Um, yeah. You know, because, um, I mean, I like Keenan Allen, but again, if you're contending right now, especially with Matt Stafford, you got what? You got those ne- the next four years are really that sweet spot that you have guaranteed yep, yep. With effort and, you know, trying to stay on top. And then you still got Swift and McCaffrey. So, I mean, Keenan Allen, you're going to need. So I, don't, I wouldn't trade Keenan Allen because then you lose that number one, you know, receiver. But yeah, if you can package the pick with uh, Ayuk. You know, um, maybe you hope Stevenson wins out the job over Harris or Harris gets hurt and you can throw him in the flex too. So I like Rosard as the number three there. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, what, what do you think, Hammer? What, what is your take on this team? Like I said, I – like Bagala said, really, I love Stafford at the quarterback position. I actually targeted him in our initial draft because I picked up Cooper Cup. I would have loved to have Matthew Stafford. I think that's that solidifies that position. Um, <clears throat> the real key, obviously, Bagala said it. There's no way around it. Christian McCaffrey is the key to his entire team. Now, he does have his handcuff in Chuba Hubbard, who was relatively solid um, in, in spell of Christian McCaffrey. So I guess from that standpoint, I wouldn't move off of Christian McCaffrey to to repair that wide receiver core he has going on. Um, <clears throat> Keenan Allen's really good, but he's getting a little long in the tooth. Um, he doesn't really make those explosive plays anymore. He's a possession guy. Um, so I think Keenan Allen's ceiling really is a high-end wide receiver too. I know he finished wide receiver 10 last year in our Dynasty uh, half PPR league, but I see him, I see Keenan Allen sliding down to maybe around that wide receiver 15, which still puts him in, in in a 14 team league. He can still be that borderline wide receiver one in that league, but I don't think he gives you the production that you're looking for. If you're, you know, that team and he's your number one wide receiver. So if you could obviously go in there and get another high end wide receiver two. Uh, Jerry Judy sounds like a really good name. I'm super high on Jerry Judy. I was high on him last year. Um, I had him in one of our redraft leagues. I really love Jerry Judy. I love everything about him coming out of Alabama. So <clears throat> that seems like a, a really solid target. Um, <clears throat> he does have Chase Claypool down there, which is going to be really interesting. Um, he has a bunch of B and C receivers on this team. So you know, maybe you could package a Lazard, you know, or an Ayuk, one of those guys just looking at it. I think Lazard right now has the higher upside more than Ayuk just because and more value right now, just because of who he plays with, who his quarterback is, Aaron Rodgers compared to Jimmy Garoppolo and um, Trey Lance. So I think from that standpoint, if you could get more by packaging Lazard with a pick, Um, I would definitely do that. So from that standpoint, you really want to target. I would say this team is a B, B minus team. Um, If Christian McCaffrey is a top five running back, this team could be a B plus, A minus kind of team, you know, making it really dangerous where Christian McCaffrey is giving you 300 points, averaging 20 to 25 a game. Because when that guy steps on the field, he produces no matter what it is. If he's injured, He'll produce if he's out there. If he's if he's banged up and he that hamstring acts up on him again, forget about it. He'll be out for two months. Carolina will be out of it, and then he won't play the rest of the season. I had McCaffrey three years ago. He ran me to the championship. I lost in the championship game, but it just shows what he could do. The last two years I had him, my team didn't even make the playoffs. So Christian McCaffrey has scared me to death. I'm staying away from Christian McCaffrey. I feel like I'm cursed by him. 
but the potential is there. Um, as we talked about in the buy or sell with Saquon, I feel like they're in similar positions where you know the upside is there, but there is injury <clears throat> risk and you know uh, a huge void to fill if he doesn't come through and produce for you at the level that you drafted. Him at. Yeah. Yeah, uh, McCaffrey. Don't forget, they also did sign Dante Foreman as well. Um, do you think they try and lighten McCaffrey's workload to try and keep him healthy? I actually what, think that's. Think I, that? I actually think that's exactly why they they signed Foreman just to eat up some of those tough yards, mm-hmm. those inside those inside the number runs where you need three or four on a first down or something like that. And, and Christian, Christian McCaffrey can focus more on catching the ball, hitting those outside runs, turning the corner, things like that. I think they're going to try and cut his numbers in half. Um, they have to, because if they don't, and if he never gets right again, it's just, they paid him a boatload of money. And uh, they right now he's the most dangerous player on their team, and for for Carolina to be good, Christian McCaffrey has to be going. So I do think um, I don't think him uh, Foreman taking carries away away from Christian would make a really big difference mm-hmm. on the field points wise because he just is so explosive. You know what I'm saying? If he's not gaining four or five he's taking a screen pass for 20 yards. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but uh, that bodes well for him and Christian McCaffrey owners is that, you know, they have somebody else in that backfield to take a, take a little bit more of the pounding from him and keep him on outside the numbers. There should be no scenario in which Christian McCaffrey is getting 25 carries. If he gets 17 carries and 10 targets in the passing game, that's that sweet spot where you can say, Nice, because in space, he's amazing. He, you know, I I watch a highlight on Instagram all the time where he's running that wheel route on my boy Clay Matthews and just Mm -hmm. leaves him in the dust. Like, he's so good as a route runner as well. I want to see 15 to 17 carries, and I want to see 10 to 11 targets in the passing game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Carolina needs to look at it more as just touches rather than carries, you know? Just let him get his touches, you know, 20 touches. If, if, if nine of them are receptions, you know what I'm saying? You're limiting him from getting hit that much more inside the box with the big. He's not an overly big physical guy. So I, and I watched a ton of the Carolina games, especially as a McCaffrey owner, the last three years, why he's running between the tackles that much was beyond me. I didn't like it. He didn't really gain a lot of yards when he's outside the numbers or outside the 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 hash marks and the tackle box that's when he's at his best yeah yeah i mean i think for uh mccaffrey even if he's healthy for me i still don't think this team is winning the championship even with a healthy mccaffrey i think they can maybe get there but i don't think they're winning it with a healthy McCaffrey. So for me, I'm, I'm getting off McCaffrey. Um, as I, I try and trade him for a running back and maybe a receiver as well. I like that idea of trading Keenan Allen and the pick for something a little better, um, especially because Keenan Allen's getting older. Definitely got to come off of Ayuk. I, I just, I don't like Ayuk there. Um, especially now if, if Trey Lance takes over, who knows what, San Francisco's a run heavy team. They have Kittle you know, and Debo. Who knows what it's going to look like? So I try and get off of IUK ASAP, like before the season even starts. Um, you know, talk up his great second half of the season. See if you can package that with the first or or a second round pick for something, even if it's just for a first round pick. IUK and a second for a first or something like that. Like maybe oh, you and, know, and go into the draft and get a receiver. And go into the draft and try and get someone. I just, you know, because you could take your chances there. Because if you flip Keenan Allen in the pick, and then you flip McCaffrey for a running back and a wide receiver, you know, now Ayuk is like, what, your third wide receiver? I mean, and you still got Lazard there. So then, yeah, I mean, I do like if you can. It gives you a little more depth. I think 
you, your chances might be a little higher than trying to go with just McCaffrey. Cause I, I just don't think that a healthy McCaffrey that this team wins the ship, but that, that's what, that's my thing with it. So that's why I think, so, bro, he's so yeah. dangerous and he's so good that he could give you 25 a game in his sleep. Yeah, I get it, but I just don't see gauge and Ayuk and Lazard and Jefferson giving you enough to win the ship, you know? No, uh, maybe, maybe but, but I don't know. I, I, but what, once you get in the playoffs, and we all know, once you get in the playoffs, anything can happen. Match you know up. what I'm saying? And yeah. matchups, things that, like that. Guys true. go crazy, you know? No, so true. I hear what you're if, saying, though, Blanc. You don't yeah. want to leave it to a crapshoot. You'd rather have somebody in there that you know is going to be just give and, me the ball, give me some good work. He's consistent. You know, I always said, especially, especially with guys that are going to be your, you know, especially wide receiver one, even wide receiver two, you need those guys that, you know, you don't want 30 and then three, you want 18, 17, 19, you know, you want that consistent level production where, you know, you could roll in there and he's going to be I don't want to say matchup proof, but you don't have to think about taking him out of your lineup, especially mm-hmm. when it gets down to the playoffs or if you see a tough matchup, you know, on the other end. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, maybe you give up uh, McCaffrey and the pick and get a wide receiver and a running back out of it. You know, like, like, you, said, like you said, I wouldn't feel comfortable with Keenan Allen as my number one. I'd much more feel comfortable as him as my number two. So, you know, if you can, if you can grab, uh, you know, something with McCaffrey and the pick thrown in there and grab a wide receiver and a running back to, you know, try and balance that out, I think he's in a lot better position it, and as chances, as chances are higher. You know, I'm a numbers guy. I think the chances that Gage and Ayuk and Lazard hit big for him to actually win the ship. I just, I just, and, and McCaffrey being healthy on top of that is just too much question marks. uh, Well, yeah, yeah. Well, but if, if McCaffrey goes back to form um, necessarily, he doesn't need all of those guys to hit big. You understand? If McCaffrey is McCaffrey, he just needs steady. He needs steady production out of, out of those guys. And then, you know, Keenan Allen is his, 15 to 20 point receiver you know what i'm saying like i i think that's why we say is this team is going to go as far as you know 22 takes it because if he's good all of those guys are decent guys who are going to fill in and just give points while he's going to do the heavy lifting if he's not good this team is not good you, you know if, if mccaffrey's not good I don't see this team going nine and four again and making the playoffs. He got, he got really lucky with certain matchups to say the least. And, and, you know, then when he needed to win games down the stretch, he, he won games, you know? So, yeah, but I mean, yeah. And that's what it was. But if McCaffrey's not good, this team is, it's, it's struggling to make the playoffs. So he got, he got hurt last year, you know, and, they struggled to make the playoffs, but then got in the playoffs. Um, didn't go anywhere, um, like most of y'all. But um, <laughs> and don't look this way. Not most of y'all. Don't out, look this way. That out there with but okay, if you if you're this team and McCaffrey let you down last year, what are you doing with McCaffrey now? Do you think that you're you're keep just keeping McCaffrey and 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 trying to move? You're Keenan Allen and and Ayuk, and do you think you still can win the ship with that, or would you move him? So what he, do you guys think? So this this team drafted McCaffrey one oh one overall, number one overall. So factor that into what you're receiving in compensation for Christian McCaffrey, of course. right? He was he was the last two years, twenty twenty, he only played three games, was PPR number fifty three. 2021 played seven games was PPR number 38. That is not going to get it done. And while I think his, his value isn't as low relative compared to say, we're talking about a Saquon, 
I it's think not. Chris, it's it's right. a lot better. All right. I think Christian years McCaffrey. Girl, I think Christian McCaffrey's value still holds a little bit because he hasn't had that catastrophic injury, right? So I think the value you get for McCaffrey, put him on the trading block. If you can get, say, a an RB two and a wide receiver two, take it. And I would even go so far as to say package Christian McCaffrey with his handcuff, Chuba Hubbard. I know they signed uh, Deontay Foreman, but package him with Chuba, see what you could get. Like you said, Blanc, balance out your team. I would entertain offers. Doesn't mean to say I would take one, but if I could get an RB2 wide receiver two for Christian McCaffrey and Chuba, uh, I'm I'm kind of entertaining. Uh, since you said that, I mean, I, I like that as well, but let, let's say he, he gives you give that you know, and if you give McCaffrey and a first, let's just say, would you, I'm looking at a team right now, would you t- take a Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, and Mike Evans? Oof. That for Caffrey and a first, Jones, Dillon, and Evans? Or maybe I'm... just McCaffrey straight up or McCaffrey in a second. I, I wouldn't offer the first. I'd try and get away with just McCaffrey for both of those, but you might have to give up maybe McCaffrey in a second. That's tough because no, you're... Jones and Dylan are in a timeshare basically. So I don't, I would still play Aaron Jones more in that situation. But if you, get, if you, if you get Aaron Jones and AJ Dylan in, in a package deal pick, you kind of have to play both of those guys on a week, on a week in week out basis. And that's too hard for me to have to do in giving up a guy that is a potential number one fantasy player. I I couldn't do that. But what about this team currently constructed, though? Because they can't use Aaron Jones and Dylan at running back and flex. And flex. Yeah, yeah. For this team, yeah, yeah, I would do it. For this team, as you said, balancing out the team, you get Mike Evans, who, as long as Tom Brady's there, and I want to just pump the brakes on as long as Tom Brady's there because – Mike Evans was in Tampa way before Tom Brady got there, and he was still a thousand yard Pro Bowl wide receiver. So mm-hmm. I'm not just going to summarily say that Mike Evans is just going to fall off a cliff because Tom Brady's not there. Um, but for this team, yes, because it, it balances it out, it checks all the boxes. You get another, you get right. a RB2 and Aaron Jones, you get his handcuff and a potential flex, and you get a basically a wide receiver two with wide receiver one upside production in a Mike Evans to pair with a Keenan Allen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for me, for me, if if I'm trading Christian McCaffrey, I, I need that first pick back along with him. That's going to be my insurance policy. So would so you? If you're, would you, but don't forget, you're getting you're getting Evans, Jones, and Dylan. Yeah, but so, I, I'm talking about on the other end. If, if I'm giving Jones and Dylan, oh, okay, yeah, and yeah, Mike that's Evans. What, okay, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. So it if, might cost the first, but I, I, I'd fight for giving a second. Not, <laughs> yeah, but no, I need that first because that's yeah. my insurance policy. Yeah, that's yeah. if he doesn't work out, you know, I, I have my first round pick to go do whatever I need to do that following year. You know what I'm saying? But um, uh, that's that's not a bad trade for for that team because you know Mike Evans is. A, a top 10 receiver and and those two backs you have to play them together but no Devonte, no real receiving weapons in green bay this year they are going to run the ball they're going to run it down people's throats they're going to use those, both of those, those backs those two running backs aaron jones is a terrific pass catcher and aj yes. has improved and and they're aaron gonna, rogers trusts both of those guys in the passing game i, I don't think that could they're be they're gonna no, and they're going to feature those two backs because those are their weapons right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And A.J. Dillon's still young enough. He's going to get a bunch of goal line work. And, and you know, in between the 20s, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be Aaron Jones. And you and the Packers have shown you for the past two years right now, with, with Matt LaFleur, I should say, since he's came over, they can run the ball. And let, so, me give, let me give you another scenario real quick. I'm looking at this team now. How about McCaffrey? McCaffrey and let's say Keenan Allen for like a James Conner, Devontae Adams. You could you could do that. Uh, I mean, well, you know, I'd still wanna I still wanna pick. 
right, well, what you if gotta give him a pick? What if we're just making some? What if it's uh, McCaffrey for uh, Connor and uh, Metcalf would be too much. Connor, would you take Connor? Well, right, right, right now. Right now, um, now that you say that, I don't think Metcalf is too much. He well, has Drew. Drew Locke is back there throwing him the ball. His, I feel like Metcalf's stock is way down. I don't think he's going to have that big of a year. He might scratch 1,000 yards. But um, it's a far drop when you go from Russell Wilson down to Drew Locke. I don't care how many people call Russell Wilson a square. He's um he's a damn good football player and Met- Metcalf is gonna feel that. I'll say this though, I, I think that you know, especially at the time that we're talking, obviously the NFL draft is in a couple of weeks. I think a lot of things, you know, are still yet to be determined. But as it stands right now, you know, DK Metcalf is still young enough where if you get him in Dynasty, I would take the opportunity to get him. And if you plug him in as your wide receiver too, with a Keenan Allen, you know, you could do a lot worse than that. There's got to be some production there. He's a big enough, talented enough guy where, you know, no matter who throws him the ball, I think he'll go up there and make plays and catch touchdowns. Now he'll get a lot of coverage rolled his way, but I I would buy on DK Metcalf. Now he's kind of in a buy low situation. Maybe we could touch on him in another episode. Um, he's a real interesting player, obviously super talented, super young, but the quarterback situation. So that that's an interesting thing. Um, trade trade piece potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this other team that I was looking at is actually the other team we're going to go over. So there it is. I didn't realize, <laughs> I, didn't, I actually didn't realize that I was just kind of flicking through. And trying oh, that's, to find that's a beautiful that's transition on your part, Blanc. Happy accident. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so Hammer, you gave this team what did you give it a, a B plus overall grade? No, I'm in the B to B Say minus. B. Um, but it, the potential there is for B plus A minus if McCaffrey stays healthy. Um, so I'll go with a B overall. We'll we'll split the difference and give him a B overall just because of inconsistency in McCaffrey's health. Okay, if I go out. I, I would say it'd be also this team, and even knowing the GM, he made some shrewd moves. He's respectable, um, kind of knows his shit, and uh, it's a solid roster. Um, it, but, you know, there are some questions. I give it a B just on face value, and if things break right. I think, you know, he, he could be one of those teams up there if things break right. But Yeah. I, I think I'm right with you guys right around that kind of um, B area. Um, I say B minus just because I don't like Ayuk and uh, Gage, especially in the long run. <laughs> um, and the fact that Keenan Allen is getting older. Um, so, there, I mean, for me, there definitely has to be a, a move made because I feel like even at fully healthy, I feel like I don't have the – if this was my team, I feel like I don't, I don't have the – um, I, I don't, I'm not in ship contention. I think I'm in playoff form and yeah, anything can happen in the playoffs, but I, I, I think I need to be more solid. I'd definitely be making some moves there. Um, and I guess that wraps up for that team going on to that next team, which we right, uh, you know, briefly touched on. I'll go over that team now. Quarterback Dak Prescott, running backs, James Connor. James Robinson, uh, Hilliard, and that's it. So it looks like Connor and Robinson are his two running backs. At wide receiver, he's got Metcalf and Lockett, as well as Adams. So, so his three receivers, Lockett, Adams, and Metcalf. Tight end, Cole Komet. And in the flex, he's got, he's got Jacoby Myers. He's got Hawkinson, actually, also. So he's got Komet and Hawkinson, as well as Jacoby Myers on the bench. Um, what do you think about this team, Bagala? What's your initial thoughts uh, on this? Uh, my first initial thoughts is I'm taking James Robinson, I'm taking Tyler Lockett, and I'm getting them out of town. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing whatever I can to package those two 
and try and get something because NTN is going to come back this year. Uh, the Jaguars are really high on him. He played with Trevor Lawrence in college. They're going to put him on the field. Um, I think James Robinson ruptured his Achilles or got hurt, ankle, something like that at the end of the season. Um, Achilles. He, yes, Achilles. Uh, he's hurt. Um, I just – and 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 it, and with the quarterback play in Seattle, it, it's just you don't have a quarterback there that's going to spread the ball around anymore. And oh. and the, the oh, person oh, that's <laughs> and yeah, so they you know they're going to basically throw it to the other team. So Lockett got to go because DK is younger, he's bigger, he's more physical, he can go up for those contested balls. Um, Lockett is more of uh, he he relies on anticipation throws. He has to be like on on pat. Even though he he's a good downfield threat, I just feel like with the bad quarterback play, Lockett's gonna suffer more than DK. And I, I have to move those two. Um, Devontae Adams, awesome. You know what I'm saying? DK, awesome. James Conner was what close to being a top ten back. You know. And Dak Prescott's going to throw it all over the lot, you know? And so that's a really solid team. It was a solid team last year. New owner this year. Um, we know the owner. He's really good. So, um, and also Hawkinson. He was hurt, banged up last year. He's a, he's a t- he's up there for, a, for one of the top tight ends. Let's not sleep. He's, I, I like Hawkinson. He's pretty good. So um, if I can, I get a, maybe another running back or a receiver. I try and get those two out as quickly as possible. Maybe attach a pick to them to get people to take them. You know what I'm saying? Because this team is in win-now mode anyway. He does have the 107. And I know you said I know you said Robinson and Lockett right away, you know, your initial thoughts is get rid of them. But what is Robinson worth at knowing that everybody knows ETN is coming back? And what is Lockett worth knowing that everybody knows he has no QB right now? What are you well, looking to move that, those for or pack? That's, yeah. Well, that's why I attach a pick to them. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that one, 107 to make it enticing for somebody to come get him. Because 107 in this year's draft, you can get up there. You're looking at maybe a Traylon Burks. Um, you know, uh, Drake London will probably be gone, but you you also got Dodson up there in that in that range. Um, you could get a Kenny Kenneth Walker running back at a, at a Michigan State. So you just you, you know you try and attach that pick and you know make it worth somebody's while and maybe go get um you know a a, a running back somebody or try and you know try and package take that pick and send it over to somebody for a Travis ETN. You know what I'm saying? Try and get him into the fold. But if I have, to, if I can, I'm getting rid of them. I'll attach a first round pick to it if I need to in this year's draft and I'll try and do, do anything. Well, yeah, like you said, so if you have ETN, would you take the 107 for the for ETN? Would you give up ETN for the 107? If this, well, if that, they, if this team sends you that trade? looking uh if i have the team that has etn uh you know he already has two top five picks you know he's not his team was bad he's not going anywhere maybe i do take it you know just straight up for etn or if i i you know i make him a you know attach something with that first round pick something off the bench maybe jacoby and myers in the first round pick for etn you know the law firm and the first round for ETN. It's a little bit high, but you know, so. you got, you don't think so? No, because uh, I don't think, I don't think Jacoby is worth if, much. If I, for him and a first, uh, you know, for him and a first, if I had to get rid of that to get ETN, I'd do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, but if you, I'm, know, if, you never know. If I'm this team, I'm actually going the other way. I'm looking at that team that has ETN, and I'm sending James Robinson over there because that guy has a bunch of running backs. So I would package James Robinson and the 107 um, to send. He may take Lockett. He may take Lockett too. Cause and he, he may take Lockett and, and try and get one of his other running backs. Um, I know he has Alvin Kamara on his team. 
Um, I know he has uh, uh, Carter from the Jets, Michael Carter from the Jets. Um, so he's he's actually stockpiled a ton of guys that, you know, he, he can't play all of them. So, you know, I would look to send, you know, something over there and and try and get, um, you know, either get some picks, maybe take Michael Carter because he's going to play Kamara. He'll play ETN, even though Kamara is going to miss some time. Um, he and he'll has play J- Dobbins. Dobbins. He has J.K. Dobbins. So this guy has a ton of um, a ton of running backs. And I would try and package Robinson with maybe uh, Lockett and or a pick and try and pry away. Maybe Alvin Kamara. He was trying to move Alvin Kamara pretty much this whole entire offseason. Alvin Kamara is a depreciating value right now because he's going to miss games. He's going to get suspended. So, you know, maybe he cuts his losses, gets Robinson, picks up Lockett because he does need wide receivers, that team uh, with Etienne. So okay. that would be a team that I target and try and open up negotiations to send Robinson over there. He gets the handcuff in case ETN is, you know, banged up, whatever the case may be. He'll have both of those guys to handcuff. He picks up a solid wide receiver and lock it. And maybe you do send the 107 over there and you pick up Alvin Kamara. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would leave you at Adams, Metcalf, and – Kobe Myers, I guess, as the number three. When you, uh, if you Marvin, have Adams, he's got Marvin Jones. Actually, I didn't see that. He does have Marvin Jones. And Marvin Jones is solid he enough as a wide receiver three, but he's solid for you know, just for as your flex or a wide receiver three, maybe. Um, so that's not. Uh, that's the, not. True. I'm looking at it now. Jacoby Myers was a uh, higher, not by much, but Jacoby Myers was wide receiver thirty. Uh, Marvin Jones was wide receiver 33. So, you know, I think you can take it or leave it. I don't want either. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I think, I think, I think uh, Myers has a little bit more upside. Just I do too. Being, just being in New England, um, Matt well, Jones is not typically going to push the ball down the field. He's more of that Tom Brady type, put it in, in between the numbers. Myers can run nice crisp routes. I think it was just, you know, a free thing. He only had one touchdown this year. Yeah. Overall, I think this team is really good. I'm looking at a B plus. If he is able to swing a trade for a Camara or somebody like that, this team is is really solid. I'm giving it a B plus. Uh, I, I, okay. I agree with that. Definitely, def, definitely up there. B plus and. One move, he's he's one move away from being in that that A A minus tier where he could really put some pressure on some people. But uh, right now, he's a B plus. Yeah, well, that's the potential of it. I mean, I can't give him a B plus. 